Hey there, on this episode of the OM617 maintenance series, we're going to go over the full procedure for the replacement of the glow plugs. I have a beautiful setup here because I'm missing an injection pump and an oil filter setup. So, your engine's going to look a little different than this, but this is nice for a tutorial. So the first thing you'll have to do is remove the wiring harness from the glow plugs. So you take an 8 millimeter closed end wrench and that'll take these nuts to hold the wiring harness on. Save these nuts because the new glow plugs don't always come with those. Now, once you have the whole wiring harness removed, you're going to take a 12 millimeter socket to get the glow plugs out. A lot of times it'll feel like the glow plug is still threading out of the hole. So you may have to use a closed end wrench and use your other hand to pull the glow plugs out. And if that's the case, that's a pretty good indication that the glow plug hole is full of carbon or soot buildup. So to address that, going to ream the holes out. Now, I will admit, I went through a learning curve with this engine because I'd never heard of reaming out glow plug holes before. It seems to be a Mercedes thing. A user dropped a comment a few years ago about reaming the holes, and as much trouble as I had pulling the glow plugs out, I started thinking more and more about it. I started looking at different ways to do it. Some guys will use a drill bit. Um, that's a close size. That's not a really good method because drill bits aren't that tight of tolerance. A ream is going to be extremely tight tolerance, uh, less than a thousandth of an inch. Now, when you go to ream, there's a couple different methods. One style has a piece that will thread in uh, in the head, and then it has a separate reaming piece that you use the first piece is a guide and then the ream goes through it. Those will set you back about 75 bucks. A buddy of mine made this for me. He took an old glow plug, drilled out the center, um, then bought a piece of ream and pressed that in. So that's what we're going to use here. So the way this works, uh, if you're lucky, you'll actually get the ream to go in far enough that the threads will start then thread that in, take your wrench, we'll just thread it all the way in so it bottoms out. And that's just going to scrape all the carbon buildup off the wall, the glow plug hole. Now not only do you want to do this to make the installation and removal easier, for the glow plugs, but it'll actually shorten the life of the glow plug if you don't clean this out before you install new glow plugs. So here you can see just a very minimal amount of carbon on there. If we go to a glow plug hole a lot dirtier. I won't even be able to get the ream to start into the hole at all. And rather than trying to shove it in there, I'll take some WD-40. That WD-40 will start to break down that carbon. It'll kind of liquefy it and turn it into a sludge. You might have to let it sit for a little while, but there you can see it somewhat liquefied that carbon buildup and the ring slid right in there. So now 
this should be a good example of what a really dirty glow plug hole looks like. We'll run this all the way down until it bottoms out. The other problem with running a drill bit or even a ream in a drill is just keeping things straight. By using this threaded portion of the old glow plug, it keeps everything lined up axially with that hole. There you can see an incredible amount of carbon build up. So our glow plug system should function much better once we get all these holes cleaned out and get a new set of glow plugs installed. When you're shopping for glow plugs, make sure you stay away from the auto lights. Go for the Bosch brand. Most times guys will have auto light glow plugs that are dead on arrival. Bosch has much better consistency with uh, performing and lasting. Definitely a job you're going to want to wear some nitrile gloves for because once this stuff gets on you, it's pretty challenging to get it off. So if you're having trouble getting your glow plugs to thread in and out of the hole, even after you ring the holes out, you can go ahead and clean the threads out. The thread pitch is M12 by 1.25, which is what they call an extra fine metric thread. And there again, this thing is just filthy dirty. Once we clean all that stuff out, there you can see I can now thread that glow plug all the way in by hand unthread it by hand, comes right out. So the next thing we got to do, after you get the whole ring and you get your threads cleaned out, is we want to vacuum that out so that stuff's not going in the engine. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a straw on hand, but one thing I found that works really well for cleaning the glow plug holes out is taping a straw to the end of your shop back. That way you can get in there and get maximum suction to get all that crud out. The next step is to install your new glow plugs. Uh, I don't actually have new glow plugs here right now. So we'll just show you with an old one. And take some anti-seize and you don't have to be super liberal with this stuff. This is an absolute uh, mandatory procedure on a Duramax diesel because they're notorious for actually getting stuck into the head to the point where you have to machine them out. On this one, it's just good preventative maintenance, keeps those threads clean and it will help make uh, disassembly easier down the road. So once you get that glow plug in there, take your 12 millimeter socket and basically just tightening it by hand, uh, small wrench, not going crazy there. You'll install your wiring harness then. Speed that nut on there by hand. And then the, the trade secret here is uh, put your closed end wrench on there. Once it gets to the bottom, just take one finger and Tighten it like that. I can actually see the glow plug body twisting in here. It does not take very much at all to break one of those off. And you'd absolutely hate to go through all this work of installing a new glow plug and then break it off. Um, that's all I have for you on this video. If you have tips and tricks you want to share or comments about the procedure that you saw today, feel free to drop a comment below and make sure you click the subscribe button so you can stay informed on the rest of the OM617 maintenance series videos. Thanks!